Okay, welcome to day seven virtual engineering introduction to engineering for fall because of our 9-11 memorial service. And so I don't have a, a verse of the day for today, but let's just um, keep our country and those who lost loved ones in the 9-11 um, in our prayers and um, just try to um, be thoughtful in that way today. Okay, so we're looking at design alternatives, part of chapter 24. Come on, computer, here we go. And so we're going to have a little bit of a resource announcement, talk a little bit about the design process, review our, our picture again, see where we are, talk about specifications, and then finally the new topic, generating alternative concepts, and then get you your class exercise. So I just wanted to point out the registrar's office has lots of good resources for students for learning. So this is getting to be the time of when a lot of the first tests are happening, lots of homework is due. And so if you're feeling a little bit behind or like you need some help, this is a good place to go um, check things out. So if you would click on the learning resources button there on that website, then we can find several different resources here. So there's, um, <clears throat> if you're thinking of having a math or physics class that needs, you need help with, there's a math assistance center that has many, many different hours of the day that it's open. Um, there are test strategies help. There's engineering tutoring over here in White Hall from um, 6 to 9 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, disability support. There's all these things to, um, depending on what, what you're needing help with and what kind of class you're looking for help with, um, to check out and always, always go talk to your faculty. Your faculty are here because they love students, they want to help you um, <clears throat> succeed in life, succeed in their class, and so talk to them sooner than later to try to find out um, what you need to do or what they're expecting or how those two don't line up so you can be sure to be as successful as you can if you're having trouble, and even if you're not having trouble. All right, so engineers design things. Maybe you haven't heard of the National Society of Professional Engineers, but this is an organization that um, is a national organization, and it's also an organization of that um, is composed of all different kinds of engineers, from electrical to mechanical to civil to chemical to what have you. Um, it's just the engineering society, and they do all kinds of things for helping their members, but they're also trying to help the profession in general, and some, some of the stuff they do is talking to the government and others to try to influence policy. So they have lobbyists that will talk to congressmen and things like that as well. And so one of the things, um, maybe not, oh well, yeah, not too um, long ago, <clears throat> but talking about the idea of autonomous vehicles, and so they were put out a statement that because engineers are concerned with the public health, safety, and welfare, that professional engineers should be involved in the development of these cars, which definitely influence the public health, safety, and welfare. So that's just one example of, of NSPE and the, um, the kind of work that needs to be done by well-qualified engineers. And so that's kind of the purpose of the professional engineering society and the exam and the licensing is to ensure that um, high quality work is done for public health, safety, and welfare. All right, so going back to our design process that we've been looking at in our book, and so we've talked about defining the problem at the very top there, and we're going to go back to that just a little bit because we want to talk about um, the performance standards a little bit more because you're going to need to generate some of those for your project. And then today's concept then is the the creativity side generating alternative concepts here. Okay. Oh, there we go. So after we define the problem, then we start generating ideas. But we want to make sure we have a good problem definition, which includes those performance standards, so we know what we're aiming at and um, what our goals are. Okay. Okay. So again, a little bit of a step back, but so where does the need originate? Could it be a larger problem? Could it be from a client? Did we just have an idea that we just is the best idea ever? Do we want 
a new, is there a new invention that we want to improve on? Are we want to create a new one? Have we done research? Um, is it our company is good at certain things and so we're going to uh, take advantage of that and, and get a market share? And so basically the need comes from just about anywhere. So we're trying to solve a problem or fill a need and there are lots of different places that it can come from. And like for this class, you have a need to build a project with your team to pass a class, right? So there are all kinds of ways that you can have a need or a problem. Okay, so going back to Kosky's demand specifications or another version of the same kind of thing as the key performance parameters like we've talked about here. So this looks like a, a military kind of a approach, but basically looking at the, <coughs> the key performance parameters as critical capability or um, constraint that is essential, right? So it's a critical capability or constraint that's essential. If you fail on one of them, you basically have failed in your mission, your project may get, can your program may get canceled or things like that. And so um, we want them to be some things that are critical. So when you're making your list, think of critical things for your project. Um, they need to be quantifiable. What does quantifiable mean? means you can put numbers to it. So if you can put numbers to it, it helps a lot more, a lot, in terms of trying to measure it to see if you've actually done what you were supposed to do or not. So when possible, try to put in numbers, things that you can measure somehow so you can know if you met your, um, your parameter or not. And then there should be, like we talked about before, a threshold, the minimum you have to do, and then probably also an objective, you know, a, a a good or uh, a, a more satisfying, better grade than just barely passing kind of thing. All right, so here's an example, an old example from a 1909 military flyer. It's kind of gone off the, off the screen there, but um, where they're giving some fairly detailed specifications. So it's desirable for an airplane that might be used as a military airplane. So <clears throat> It should be designed, a flying machine, should be designed so it can quickly and easily be assembled and taken apart, all right, an army wagon is capable of being put together in o about an hour, all right, so they're putting numbers to it, giving it a weight designed to carry, or weight that it must carry, 350 pounds of people plus fuel, all right, and then also be able to go 125 miles. They have some speed, so the speed was maybe more of a question looks like, and so they want to have the minimum threshold, right, is 40, but they're allowed, they give you a little bit of flexibility here, and so um, if you meet the threshold, you get 100% of the, um, the money, basically, but if you fail, you can still get some money, right, partial credit, and usually in the real world there's not a lot of partial credit, but this kind of looks like a partial credit, and then extra credit here, right? If you get over that, you can get extra pay, right? Um, should be able to be easy to get in the air, right? Without a specially, special spot, without hurting itself, right? Um, also be able to have some safety in terms of unexpected failures, right? If there's an accident to the propelling machinery, if the engine dies, what's gonna happen to this thing? So there should be some sort of safe safety device there to get you down. Um, simple construction, so the operator, it has to be simple enough so that the operator doesn't have to be trained for two years to be able to fly this thing, right? Intelligent man can, can be, become proficient in a reasonable length of time. And then um, as part of their work, part of the work of whoever designed the plane would need to also instruct people about how to use it, right? Write a user manual or actually it looks like give a class on it. So pretty good list of specifications there, right? So this was you know a while back, looks like 1908, August 28, 1908 deadline. And so this was just some of the results, a little bit sad here, but um, flight over Fort Meyer, made a 45 mile an hour round trip from Fort Meyer to Alexandria, but then it ended in a crash and somebody died, so. But anyway, it didn't stop them from building more planes, right? But maybe a little more safety concerns were needed. Okay, so just a little bit about specifications again. So the idea for the specifications is to help the design process, right? So 
It's not that the design process is going to help you make the specifications. You should say what you need and then you should design accordingly, right? But it's a little hard to do at times to be specific and to anticipate all the ideas or questions that might come up. So here's some questions that we could look at. So, you know, will <clears throat> the specification that I'm writing, will it cause me to um, limit some designs that I might want? So we have to think about that form versus function. Am I giving, you know, just the function and not getting too much about the form? Oh, here is that again. I, I have I specified functional limits or form solutions, right? Form solutions, forms or solutions might be limiting the creativity of whoever's trying to meet these specifications. How will it be verified? So that's kind of like I was saying, if you can have numbers, things that are easy to measure, that makes it a lot better to, in terms of trying to see if you, they've satisfied the performance parameters. And it's, you know, how could this be misinterpreted? How could the, the, um, the guidelines be missing, you know, misread or um, not understood. Okay. So here are your kind of a lot of words, I'm sorry, but your specifications from your uh, project guidance document. And so I want you to think about this. So this, we've tried to give you a good list of specifications here. But there could be some confusion or some things that are not clear or just different problems with this. So we, and we want it, you to make it yours. And so what you need to do is, as a team, for the, um, excuse me, for the project update this week, your team needs to get together and have some key performance standards. All right, and then the one person who is a reporter for this week needs to turn that in as part of the update for this, the first update that's due on Friday. But it's not up to that one person to write the objectives, it's up to the whole team, right, to write a problem statement, like we talked about and practiced last week, and then also get three performance parameters that should be closely related to these, but not exactly word for word. So you need to write your own version of them and um, work together as a team to decide on what yours are. All right, so make sure you have at least, this is not, a, it doesn't have to be only three, but at least three, conform, three performance parameters, specifications for your launcher. All right, so write them down. If you're not with your group right now, write your guesses on what they should be. Um, share them with your group when you have your group meeting or if you do it by email or what have you, but be ready to share, be um, part of the, an active part of your team so that you can get your, update in on Friday. All right, so you might want to pause the video for a minute and write down your version, what you think three good ones would be for your team. Okay, so now on to the, the topic of the day, which is generating alternative concepts. So this is the, the creative part. This is the brainstorming. This is coming up with maybe crazy ideas and good ideas and weird ideas, but as many ideas as you can, and then eventually you're gonna pick one, but first, just like with the rules of brainstorming, you said there's no bad ideas, there's no criticizing when you're doing brainstorming. You're first trying to just be creative and um, work off of each other, and so um, hopefully you'll be able to do some creativity by yourself if you're watching this on your own, but then also when you get with your team, sharing ideas and hopefully can build on it build off of each other's ideas once you get there okay so how do we get ideas um, lots of different ways one idea is reverse engineering I don't know if you've heard of reverse engineering but you've probably done reverse engineering reverse engineering just means taking things apart and seeing how they're made right seeing how they were designed um, understanding what's in the box and then trying to use that to make a better version of what's in the box or a different version, um, but just you know, it helps to understand how other people have solved the problem to be creative and to find ways to do your own version. Focus on the user needs. So again, this is um, maybe not so applicable to our project, but in general, you need to know your market. You need to know if anybody's ever going to buy this thing, right? Do a literature review, um, see what kind of um, 
maybe research has been done at a university or what other kinds of things have been published out there, people's ideas that are out there that you might learn from, and maybe just looking at products that are already out there that you could start from. So, because it's probably a lot easier for most people to start with, start with an idea and look at what's wrong with it and make small improvements than to try to come up with something totally new. All right. It's also important to focus on you know, what you are able to do, what you're interested in, what your team strengths are, um, what materials you have, what you know, intellectual properties. You can't violate patents and things like that as well. So you've got to be careful about copyrights and all that kind of stuff. And then just um, your production capability and your design capabilities. So you, know, you might design something great, but if your factory can't make it or for our project, if you can't build the thing, then it's probably not gonna, you're probably not gonna complete the requirements of the project. Um, and so, just in general, brainstorming, can, you can take all these kinds of things into mind and have a brainstorming um, session just where you're just coming, bouncing ideas off of each other, thinking of ideas, going in different directions, good ideas, bad ideas. Hopefully you've had some experience with brainstorming in the past. And then analogies, just kind of thinking this is kind of like a whatever kind of a problem, or, you know, this is kind of like this, and so how, how are these things the same? What can we use to get ideas and um, apply the, this idea? Maybe it's not the perfect match, but it can give us some ideas to go forward and, and make a new design, um, basically breaking out of the box, trying a new idea. All right, so this is just a, just a little bit looking at different kinds of ideas. So we have different kinds of cars, so different numbers of um, cars, but then the little tykes car outsold them all. And so um, a creative, fun idea, and just a little bit of, of fun information there. A product that um, maybe is a little bit of a timeless design, just looking at how much it has. It has changed some, but hasn't changed a whole lot from when it was originated. Okay, one of the ways to do analogies is to look at God's creation. Um, looking at animals this is just an example that um, some of you found of people trying to design a, uh, uh, looking at the neural network of a dragonfly, looking at, I think, look at this eye array of a, of a dragonfly trying to figure out how to make an array of um, sensors to measure or whatever. Um, looking at the pandemic and looking at just different kinds of ways that nature, well, the way God has made nature um, very beautifully and very effective at what it does and how can we copy that. Um, one of the, this it says things about neural network, but one of the ways that um, people have developed artificial intelligence is to try to do is called artificial neural networks, studying how the brain works with neurons that fire and using the math, some basic math and some basic models to develop computer algorithms that can, they call it learn, that can take up, that can identify patterns and then produce a response that's um, similar, when they see a similar pattern, produce the desired response. So um, that's one, uh, one way we can um, do biomimicry looking at analogies from nature to other things that we want to try. You probably heard of how they invented Velcro, or at least the, the myth, the legend of how Velcro was invented was just by um, somebody had um, like cockleburrs or weed seeds that would stick into their clothes. And so they got the idea of, of making Velcro with the hooks and the loops that um, is very popular and a good invention that, um, theoretically came from observing nature. Another idea is just looking at the shapes of things. And so this is a, a fun one with the, the shape of the fish. Got us a minivan, I don't know. Um, but it's just uh, lots of ways to get inspiration, to get ideas. Heuristics, so what is a heuristic? Okay, it's a process. It might not, using heuristics would be a process that might not lead to an optimum solution but it gives you kind of potential things using shortcuts. Like, like this graphic says, you know, it's a rule of thumb or a best practice, kind of using your intuition. So you're going to put a spring, use 
in your launcher you use a spring of some sort. Would you take a spring out of an ink pen? Or would you take a spring off of a trampoline? Or would you take a spring, you know, off of a car suspension? You know, what kind of what kind of size of things do we need or what kind of things have you seen done before that would make sense here, right? And so using heuristics, kind of not doing a lot of calculations or even measurements, but getting some idea of this is pretty good, this worked here, this is how big it should be, this is how strong it should be, how fast it should be kind of things. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the five whys before, um, but they can also help us be a little more, possibly be a little more creative, though I've had a little bit of trouble with it, but there was a, this is also kind of a legend. Um, <clears throat> you see the, the, um, the reference here says folklore, the truth behind a monumental mystery. So there is, this is kind of a classic example for the five whys method, but talking about some of them say different Washington DC monuments, maybe it was the Lincoln Memorial or the Washington Monument, I'm not quite sure which one, but there was a story that it was deteriorating too rapidly. So the first question is why is it deteriorating so fast? The answer was because it had to be washed all the time. So like, I think like every day. So why does it have to be washed so much and maybe with chemicals? Um, because some versions say because there's too much bird poop on it or this, this version says because that it was really because there are so many eggs, bug eggs stuck to the monument. And why are there so many deposits of bug eggs? Well, because the gnats are mating near the monument and laying their eggs right there. And why, and there are lots of them. So why are there so many gnats? Because the lights. They turn the lights on and the bugs from the river or from around come in at dusk and they are attracted by the lights. All right, and so this kind of gave them an idea for a simple solution. All right, what could we do? Kind of got to the root of the matter that it was the lights attracting bugs that was causing it. And so they did some studies and, and found out that they thought if they could turn the lights on after the sun went down, they would reduce the gnat numbers by 85%. Right? And so if there are a lot fewer nets, then there are a lot fewer eggs, and there is a lot less mess, and so they don't need to wash so often and get too much water and too much chemicals and um, have the, the rocks of the monument start falling apart sooner than they should. So it all makes a good story with the five whys, actually there are only four here, but kind of getting down to the root of things and looking at possible solutions, but then in this, it was interesting in this article that they said that the solution actually hasn't, this was done since like 2014, or maybe before, I'm not, anyway, the studies were done quite a while ago, but the solution has not been implemented, even though they tried it and they found some success, but then there are other factors, right? So the, the, um, the tourists and the photographers and the people who like to take pictures of the monuments at Washington, D.C., like to have them lit up so they can have the great sunsets behind them and had beautiful pictures and so they complained about having the lights come on too late for their pictures and so anyway there are lots of lots of factors to go in and so this is kind of just an idea of the five whys might help us think about different aspects but you know it's, there's not necessarily one answer to all these problems so i just try to think about maybe try some five whys with your project design and so Again, like I said, it kind of is easier to start with an idea that's already there and make changes and adjustments and improvements on something like that than to start from scratch. So I just thought, okay, let's just try a slingshot idea, right? So this is kind of my analogy of a, a slingshot with a pretty strong rubber band should be able to shoot something, right? So this is kind of a rule of thumb heuristic kind of idea. And so I've got my um, foam bullet in here and some sort of little cup to hold it in and then some rubber bands or elastic bands of some sort that we can pull back like a slingshot and stretch it here have some sort of a loop a hole here that we can just a nail goes into the wood and holds it in there and then so my trigger is just I pull my nail out and then it lets this thing go boing and it shoots my bullet right into the five gallon bucket 15 um, 15 feet away or what have you. And so that's, that's the design. So it's some sort of a wooden ramp that we built here, theoretically, to hold the, hold the, um, the slingshot because we can't hold it ourselves, right? So here's my 
possible why. So why can't we hit the target? Well, the bullet goes too far. Well, why does it go too far? Because the angle's too low and it just shoots straight across, right? It needs some arch to go up and then come back down. Well, why is the angle too low? Because it's, there's no adjustment. It's, the angle is, is built here. It's a wooden structure. It's built, and we can't move this back and forth to get it to the right location, so it just goes, right? Well, why isn't there? Because we have a fixed ramp height. Why is there a fixed ramp height? Maybe we should have thought of that, right? Maybe it's a design flaw. Maybe you can give us an idea of how to do it. So this is just kind of a very simple example, but just kind of looking at why, what's going on, and you could have different answers and then get a different process too. You know, maybe we would say that the, um, the rubber band is too strong or what have you. So there are lots of different factors you can think of or imagine maybe, not even trying it, but just imagine ways that things could go wrong and try to ask why and see what ideas come to mind there. Okay, so here's another method that um, found looking or searching around, and so um, it's called Scamper. It comes from a person named Bob Everly that um, maybe got it from somebody else, or anyway, there's similar things around. Uh, you can check out these links here, but it's basically trying to take a design or an idea and use these methods to um, improve it, change it, come up with new ideas, come up with new inventions, right? And so the S of scamper is substitute. So what could we, for example, how could we change a material or change a process or change a, substitute something. So take, take one aspect of it and put a different part in there or do something a little bit different. Substitute something, some aspect of it and see if that would help our design or make something better, right? Another idea for being creative would be to think about, okay, how can we combine things together? Could we somehow combine, I don't know, um, two different aspects of what we're trying to do or combine existing um, structures or ex existing ideas into something else so that we can do, do things together, maybe, you know, something that isn't movable adding a vehicle to it to be able to move so that we can have a more you know more marketable product right what can we adapt or adjust maybe we're not going to substitute take something totally out but maybe we can change something a little bit make an adjustment make something maybe in my um in my idea with the trigger maybe i could have different holes for my nail to go in let's go see if i can go back so maybe I could adjust how far it goes by having a row of nail holes down here. So my trigger is in different holes. So I can pull it back only this far, or this far, this far. So I could have um, a little bit different system, not just one hole for my nail to go in that pulls out. Maybe having it adjustable might make a big difference. All right. <clears throat> how can we modify, minimize, maximize something as the M? And so maybe we can we have something here, maybe we can just make it a little bit bigger, right? Or make it a little bit um, more something or less something. So trying to just be creative and think about, you know, maybe if it was smaller or maybe if it was a stronger rubber band or a bigger slope or what, what have you, you can um, think about those aspects of trying to be creative. Um, put it to another use. So this one, I don't know if we, um, applying, I keep trying to think of these with according to our project, which is kind of your assignment, but putting it to another use in general, we could think of something that's already designed, I don't know what it might be, but you know, a certain kind of a brush or a certain kind of a electronic device that's used for in a certain industry, maybe this is something that um, business people use, but maybe it could be useful for a doctor or a nurse or whatever, different applications, different uses. Um, maybe a farmer could use something that the engineers are tending to use or the doctors are, anyways. Some, some ways that you can take something that's already maybe developed and find some other audience for it, some other customers for it. Maybe you'll have to modify it some, but put it to another use. Or even within your project, um, possibly finding some tools or some things that are made for one purpose that might be able to be included in yours. Eliminate, maybe you need to just take things out. 
get rid of something and it might make something better. Um, there may be things that are holding you back. It's just another um, possibility for creativity. And then how about reversing or rearranging? So sometimes if you're trying to achieve something, maybe you can think about how could we do it worse? What would make it worse or make it not work? And think of it maybe by going the wrong way, you can think about how to go forward the other way. Or maybe by making it do the opposite of what you wanted, you might come up with a totally idea for a different kind of invention or something along those lines. So, um, so for your in-class activity to show that you've watched this video and um, thought about, and anyway, thought about chapter 24, at least the beginning of it, I want you to start thinking about these ideas for your launcher. And in particular, I mean, I said here, start thinking of my slingshot example that I made and then use Scamper to write down at least seven ideas. They don't have to be good ideas, but you try to do one for each letter um, for making your device better than my basic slingshot that I drew. Or if you want to start off with some other basic idea and make some other um, improvements or changes to it, you can do that as well. But seven ideas related to your launcher somehow and trying to relate them to this Scamper method here. All right, so these different ways of looking at a problem, trying to be creative. And so there's on Campus Web, there's a, an assignment called Day 7 Activity that's due by 11 o'clock on 9-11. And so um, you can write your ideas on paper or do it in Word and upload it somehow, get that turned in, uh, uploaded in Campus Web for credit for participation credit or for whatever, in-class activity for today. Okay, continuing on, read the rest of chapter 24, quiz likely on Monday, you may have already read it. And then just a reminder for your project, so this is, looks like quite a ball launcher kind of invention here, um, but we had our kickoff on um, last week, this Friday we have update one due, so a problem statement, so this, these things are um, things that the person doing update one is to report, but the whole team needs to work on them. All right, so you have to have a team problem statement, key performance parameters, at least three, and a schedule. So give us a schedule of who's going to be writing all the other updates. Um, and if you um, get to it, you might talk about um, the actual, or start thinking about the actual schedule for your project, although that's gonna be the main goal of project two is gonna to be to try to, um, I'm sorry, update number two, talking about the con alternative concepts and so forth. Uh, okay, didn't mean to go forward, but we'll go ahead and go with that. So on Friday, from your designated first update writer, first update author, um, turn it in online, give details of your team's work this week. So just kind of, this is, number two is kind of a general, for each update, give details of your team's work for the, the week, the week ending on Friday, basically. Um, say which, how many meetings you had, who attended those meetings, their time, location, the tasks accomplished at the meetings, so forth, uh, what you talked about. Um, any other work maybe that was accomplished that week by people working on their own, maybe not in a meeting. And then for this one, and specifically for update one, give information developed by your team, problem statement, performance parameters, schedule of authors. Okay. And then these are, Hopefully you know your team assignments for whichever section you're in. Okay, we'll go ahead and stop there and see you next time.